Welcome back to the P2 Aero Shop. I know I teased a bit about the water pump in the last video, so I guess it's time now to just let the cat out of the bag. It's no secret, one of the weak links in the Yamaha 3-cylinder engine is the water pump impeller. I've been researching the possibility of using an electric water pump and simply eliminating the mechanical pump to not only eliminate the issue, but also gain some pretty cool capabilities. As you've all seen, I set up a used pump to test. But first, let's take a look at a few examples of failed impellers. The plastic parts just don't seem up to the task at hand, and they either break off or strip out. And while there are aftermarket options, they're all expensive, and some have had issues with the shaft after installing the billet parts. I found a line of pumps used by BMW from a company called Peerberg. There's so much to consider when looking into this kind of thing, but I'll just outline my thought process so we're all on the same page. Weight is obviously a concern anytime you're building an aircraft, and these units are not the lightest in the world, but I happen to have an engine that is 100 pounds lighter than a Titan, so I have a little wiggle room there. Secondly, the amp draw needs to be considered. The Yamaha charging system is nowhere near that of a car, so am I going to be able to keep up with the current draw? How much time would I have on battery power if the charging system was to quit before the pump would no longer run? I don't really have all these answers yet, but that's why I'm planning to test all this during ground run testing. Techomotive has the specs on all the different models available, and it was a good resource while I was researching these pumps. My plan right now is to remove the impeller from the mechanical pump, as well as the thermostat in the cooling system. I'll be regulating the pump's duty cycle with pulse width modulation based on the water temps. This means that my cooling is no longer tied to the RPM, which is one of those advantages that I was talking about. I only anticipate needing about 40% of this pump's capability, so it should have a really easy life, and I hope that would encourage a long life of the unit. So a low placement of this pump, as you see mocked up here, as well as the radiator tank mods that you'll see me do shortly, will both help in preventing cavitation of this pump, and time will tell if any of these theories will prove true or not. At this point, none of my cooling system is proven, and I still consider it all as just a test. This is why I'm hesitant to make any permanent mounting solutions for any of it at this time. I know I've said it a million times in the past, but I'm not posting videos as how-to or in, in an effort to convince anyone that any of this is a great idea. I don't need or even desire anyone's approval. My goal is to share the process as well as my thought process and reasoning along the way. And in the end, I think I'll have a pretty sweet airplane, although it may not look like this when it all gets done. To me, that's part of the fun. Let's try something new, something affordable, something taking advantage of the automotive and the power sports technological advances that general aviation is so lacking. You know, it kind of makes me laugh when I think about it, but I'm building an airplane powered by a Yamaha snowmobile engine. It's got a Honda radiator and a BMW water pump. I wonder how many other brands I'll add to this list by the time we get done. You know, I've been practicing my aluminum welding in the background, but I'm still not comfortable with it, so I'll be taking this to the same friend who helped me do the intercooler. I encourage you to let me know what you're thinking in the comments section below. I really enjoy the dialogue that it creates, and we can all learn from each other down there. Am I missing something here? Should I have considered other things? Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you